Hey folks, it's minus one today. It's just below the freezing mark. Yeah, I'm heading out. I got a a special mission today. I went to the post office yesterday. I'm not sure why, but for whatever reason, I get there before four o'clock and the post office was closed. I don't know why. But I got home and I had an envelope in my box. I don't know if you can read that. There's too much light. It's not ours. It came from Oakville Trafalgar Medical Hospital. Or Memorial Hospital. And it says Diagnostic Imaging on it. That sounds important. So, like I say, it's not ours. It, it's It's got the our old post office box number on it. So that's probably why it was put in our box thinking it was ours. So, um, the time now is after 2 o'clock. If I take it back to the post office and then they put it in the right box, chances are this person is not going to get this till at least Monday. And this sounds like it's something that they're waiting for. Because this sounds like a medical thing that couldn't be done here in town, so they had to go to a specific place to get something specific done. So they're going to want that information. So I'm going to deliver that to them today. Uh, I'm not going to show that because I don't want to show where they live. This, this is Friday, by the way. So you know, if they don't get it today, they got to wait till at least Monday. So. But I'm not going to show that. And it's sort of kind of along my route anyway, so I'm just going to pause for a bit and then resume. I'm probably going to do the school trail today. Assuming the monster's batteries are going to be okay in this cold. <laughs> uh, I didn't think I'd be able to do that trail anymore this year, but all, we, all our snow's melted already. So, I don't know, it, it kind of sounds like that's going to be the thing this year. Snow melt, snow melt, snow melt, because it's not supposed to be super cold, and we are supposed to get a lot of snow, so... I assumed, because of all the snow that was in the forecast, that, you know... I wasn't going to be able to do that trail anymore. That's why I, I labeled that other one and said final trip down the school trail this year. However it was I titled it. Thinking that actually would be the last time. But I guess everything's melted since then. So I got to do that. I don't have any other real plans that I can think of. So I'm going to explain. Nobody's asked yet. But when I make my videos, I see it. And these, these cameras really make things look like what they're not. My dirty hands. My hands are actually not dirty. <laughs> the camera makes them look dirty. That is a nicotine stain. Yes, that's there. But everything else you're seeing is dry skin. And when I look at my hands, I barely see it. But like I say, these cameras... They make my hands look really dirty, and they're actually not. That's actually dry skin, and it's emphasizing it for some reason. I don't know why. But my hands do not actually... If you look at my hands without the camera, they do not look like this. I don't know what the camera's doing. <laughs> but I have eczema on my fingers and other places. That's what's causing the dry skin. It's only really, really bad on my knuckles, but everywhere. It's just, it's just dry skin. And why the camera makes it look like dirt, I have no idea. But I wanted to explain that because I, I'm, I've been expecting somebody to comment. Why are your hands always dirty? They're not dirty. <laughs> it's just dry skin. It's just I don't know. The camera makes it look so bad. It just it just it's amazing. So that's what that is. Other than a nicotine stain, my hands aren't dirty. So I need to get a little bit weird here. I was sitting out in the park the other day, and I saw a milk truck go by across the bridge. And it, I don't know how to explain it, they're, they're stainless steel tanks, but one was, the one that went by was, was kind of discolored, almost like if you overheat metal you get that rainbow look, it kind of looked like that. And I got thinking, they had one of those trucks in the parade. And it was nice and shiny. They probably picked their best truck. <laughs> my cleanest truck to use in the parade. But the one they had in the parade said goat's milk on it. 
and there's just something I ask all the time, but that it just kind of made me think of it at that time. And it kind of makes you wonder where we got ideas for some of the foods that we eat. So, okay. When a baby is born, they get their milk from their mother. Okay. Okay, I was just hearing something back outside. I don't hear it now. So, it kind of makes me wonder, who come up with the idea? I was right, I did hear a siren. <laughs> who thought it was a great idea to get our breast milk from cows? It's like, oh, mommy's kind of dried up here. Here, suck on this cow for a while. Like, who come up with that idea? And why? <laughs> well, things like that. It's going to make you wonder. And then how did we make the transition to goats? You know? And it, it's a staple. It's, it's kind of, you know, it, it's part of everything that we consume, right? So, kind of brings me to another question. When it comes to cooking, okay, let's say we're making a cake. Okay, we get flour, ground up plant, right? And milk. Now let's just throw some milk in there from a cow. Um, sugar cane. Okay, well, well it's just sweet tasting. Let's just grind that up and throw it in, see what happens. And just to make it, you know, gooey, let's throw some water in there. And we'll throw it in the oven and heat it up for a while. Like, oh look, I made a cake. Like, who comes up with this? How do you, how do people? Like, I know understand now. People understand how things work, but originally, how do people come up with these ideas? Of grind everything into a powder, put it all together, add some other stuff to it. You know, put some water in it so it's all gooey and like slime, and then we'll just kind of heat it up for a while and see what happens. Like, it just. No, where's the history of cooking come from? <laughs> so it's just, you know, and what the heck, we'll crack open a chicken egg and throw that in there as well, right? It, it, it just, wow. So it kind of makes you wonder about other things. Like vanilla flavoring. Okay, vanilla, yeah, comes from vanilla beans. Um, vanilla extract. I don't know, Michelle makes it. You soak the vanilla bean in vodka for a while, and that... Okay. Um... Unfortunately, <laughs> vanilla can also come from other sources. And one of those sources... is... beaver anal glands. Yes, they get vanilla flavoring from beaver butts. Um, okay, that raises questions. <laughs> I immediately have two questions. One, um, how do they harvest that? And two, who discovered that beaver anal gland secretions taste like vanilla? You know, these questions is kind of like, huh? So... Those of you who like chocolate, I don't know how chocolate is made. I apologize in advance. <laughs> it's actually kind of disgusting. Uh, maybe I won't get into that. I... I never would have known. Actually, I, I'm not going to talk about it. because it's, it's, it's too disgusting to even talk about how... You'll have to look that one up. <laughs> it's pretty gross. The end product is wonderful. For sure. So, here in Canada we have uh, a specialty. I know there's other places, but it, it's pretty big in Canada. It's called maple syrup. 
maple syrup if you've ever had it it's just it's an amazing product um essentially it, it's tree sap but that raises the question who discovered this so you get this tap it found it into a tree a maple tree and it causes a wound in the tree and it starts to bleed and this sap is running through the tree at the time and it comes out this drips into a bucket and when you get a whole bunch of this tree sap you boil it down till there's nothing left and except for this really thick paste and that is maple syrup there's nothing added to it it's just it's just the tree sap with most of the water boiled out of it and it's 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 amazing. It's like natural sugar. It's just, it's just amazing. But it just kind of makes me wonder who discovered it and how and why. <laughs> Look, I stabbed the tree. It's bleeding. I wonder what that blood tastes like. Well, that's pretty sweet. Let's boil the water out and see how, see what else happens. Like it just... But it, it's incredibly expensive. Um... I'm considering buying a jar of it for my coffee because I put maple syrup in my coffee once in a while. I just it really changes the taste of the coffee. It makes it pretty sweet, and I mean it literally sweet. Um, uh, last time I was at Value Mart, I was looking at there's three different sizes, and all three sizes are the same price, thirteen dollars. You get this little wee jar all the way up to this big jar, and are, all three of them are thirteen dollars. So I'm thinking, well, why is there a difference? And I, I'm, I'm betting probably processing. The smaller one has less water in it. And it's been processed longer, and of course, the longer you process it, the more it's going to cost you because you need fire. And I actually got to see this pro process one time. Uh, my friend's grandfather had a sugar shack in the back of his yard and he used to collect sap and he made maple syrup and he showed us the process. So he helped um, take the bucket off. Buckets were big, kind of like the ones that I, I have out here, the big white ones. And you take it off and you put an empty bucket in its place. And then you take those buckets to the sugar shack and you dump it in this, this got this big rectangular tray on top of this furnace. And you dump it in there. And underneath it, it's got like a wood fire. You just keep feeding more wood to it. And this fire heats it up, boils it, and eventually all the water steams off and you're left with maple syrup. So that's how it's done originally. Now, you know, industrial wise, they use natural gas burners and that so it, it's it costs a lot of money to actually do it and it's time consuming it takes a lot of time so that's why it's so expensive but it, it's just the process is amazing i can't remember the, the the quantities how many gallons of of tree sap it takes to make one liter it's just it's just pretty phenomenal there's a lot of water in it so but it just it kind of makes you wonder it's like who started that process? Who discovered it, right? <laughs> but it's just pretty amazing. Like I say, there are other places that do it, but it's 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 a big thing in Canada. We have a lot of maple trees here, and I'm not sure if there's a specific maple. I, I think it's sugar maple. I don't know if you can get it from black maple or others, but the sugar maple, I'm pretty just by its name, I'm pretty sure you know would be the big one in it. And the prime time for that is January, February. Uh, the best weather would be freezing overnight and then above freezing during the daytime. That's the optimum time for this app to flow at its maximum. I don't know why I know that. <laughs> Maybe because I'm Canadian, eh? I don't know. But no, I'm not fully stereotypically Canadian. I, I hate hockey. Hockey. I hate it. I played it once when I was a kid. It just it was just never my thing. I just I hate hockey. I don't know why. I just do. So I guess that's all I really have. Um oh, I can't think of anything else. So 
Let's go into the cold and go deliver some good news, hopefully good news, to somebody I make today. Holy, I don't know why I'm so chilled. I've been getting like really cold at not so cold temperatures, so I'm kind of worried that uh, with my illness being really bad now, I'm thinking maybe my sensitivity to the cold has also been amplified because I'm just. <laughs> I'm shivering. So. I got the letter delivered, um, I can actually say the box number, 1690 was my old box number, and I assume, you know, because it said 1690 on it, they just kind of assumed it was Arch or whatever, well it turns out that's not even his box number, so, <laughs> the medical place it was sent from doesn't even have his right address, so. so he was happy, he was grateful that I gave it to him, and brought it to him. So I really wasn't paying attention to the time when I left, um, I, Timmy's drive through I saw the school buses congregating at the community center. And I think, oh crap. So by the time I got up to the high school, uh, the high school kids were already getting out, but the elementary school kids were still in, so I was able to go through without worrying about them being in my video. 
So, get me on the trail, do a little bit of a loop. <clears throat> I'm going to stop down at the dam for a break. And before I came home, I decided to do the fur trail. Um, once the monster's in the shop, I'm not going to be able to do that anymore because I just, it's, it's too muddy up there right now <clears throat> for the ES950 and its tiny little wheels. So even if there's no snow, I, I just doubtful I'll be able to try to take that through there. So I wasn't going down that muddy trail. I saw the heron. It's still here. <laughs> <coughs> the rivers are up a little bit right now. And it's kind of an overflow area along the floodplain that the water's flowing through, and that's where it was. I didn't even notice it until it flew away. It's you, hello, heron. So it's still in the area. It hasn't migrated, so it's kind of cool. I'm kind of wondering if I'll see it this winter or not. Because the. If I'm going to be driving the ES950, then you know I'm not going to be stopping down the river very much. Because there's not a whole lot of places I can perk that down there when there's snow on the ground. So I went up to the soccer fields, sat up there, and I drove a little bit off-road. I, I already knew I could go through there. I went out yesterday <clears throat> in the rain, and I scoped that area out. Cause I went up on I I don't want to drive down to the water area because the ground's so soft and saturated right now. I just didn't want to end up getting stuck, you know, not being able to back up. So I've been going up there, and while I was up there, I just kind of walked around a little bit, and I found a nicer place to park, and just kind of made sure there was nothing buried in the grass to get stuck on. <laughs> no fallen trees or tree branches or anything. And it's all clear in that particular spot, so I knew I could drive up into that. So. Geese flying over. So I think that's that's all I had. I don't remember anything else happening while I was out. I think that's it. So. So that's all I got. I gotta go in and get warm. <laughs> I am so chilled. Thanks for watching.